I'm dismayed how many writers in Canadian theatre and American theatre go to television. I feel like we lose yeah. when they bleed away like that. Yeah. I, I, it drives me crazy. Yeah. Well, thank God I did it in the reverse order, so I, don't have, I have no interest in going there. Right. Because I started there. <clears throat> but if the guys in Hollywood phoned you up and said, David, you know, we want to put you on a $150,000 retainer contract and we want you to look at some scripts and re do some rewriting for us. Well, you know, I've, I've sort of had all that. I mean, I, I was offered, when we did Up the Fields lately in, in New York, I was offered a, a movie deal. Um, but I didn't want to write a movie. I said, I, I'm quite happy writing plays right now. I mean, I've turned down all kinds of stuff in television and film. And I've also worked, tried to work in film, but the money always fell through. I'm, several of my plays have been optioned, and I've written screenplays for them, but we never came up with the money. Which ones? Um, one Crack Out, um, Saltwater Moon, um, Of the Fields Lately, and a number of, number of productions of One, one Crack Out one time was going to be done by Jim. Jim Brown and Rick Torn, <laughs> but the money fell through. Always the problem. Is that a regret for you? Yeah, it is. I would like to have done it with those two guys. Right. They were friends and they were both good. Right. They would have been wonderful in it, especially Rick Torn. Boy. And for you as a writer who, who was based in words, and you, as the theater scene is shifting and there's more imagistic theater, there's more, you know, strings down. There's here Robert, Robert Lepage who's very script light and very image heavy. Where does that place you? I don't know. I have no idea why, why it places me. I don't even think that way. Where do you think it places me? Well, I don't know because again, it's, it's like, you know, careers that they rise, they move, they're in the center, and then they drift, and then they're pushed, or whatever. I mean, I sometimes feel, well, am I now the old-fashioned old person who likes well-crafted words and a well-crafted play? And no, maybe Stop I'm just old. Stop thinking that way. Stop thinking <laughs> that way. But maybe it's true. Well, I think that's dangerous to start thinking that way. Because my experience with leaving home taught me something about what's trendy. When, when I, when I uh, decided I was going to write that play, I thought the only way I can write this play is to write a realistic family play. But I thought, Jesus, that's old hat. That's passe, you know? But I, so when I thought I was being tremendously brave and courageous by flying right in the f face of fashion. And you know what? It worked. It's exactly what I did, and I, and I had a successful play. I wasn't worrying about being trendy or being fashionable. And actually, I thought I was going to get slaughtered for that reason. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Even Bill was worried about it. He said to me, you know, there's a... There's going to be a lot of people hating you, hating you for writing this play. And I said, why, Bill? He said, well, because it's going to make them feel things that they don't want to feel. And he said some interesting things before we opened. One of the things he said to me was, look, we're going to run this play for six weeks. Uh, if it doesn't do well, we'll close it in, in three, three weeks. But don't expect to make any more than $30 or $40 a week. That's what he told me. He also told me that if it doesn't, if it wasn't successful, he was he had to close here because, because of what happened, because of Creeps being the only one that was a successful play that year, and he couldn't afford to keep going. I said, "Thanks, Bill. I need that pressure. That was good." <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it worked out. And what made Bill? Um so important for you. I mean, what were, I, was, I guess I, I want to talk a bit about Bill and for people to know that man because I never interviewed him. Um, what was it about him that made this place take root and then move? 
and then be so successful. This place? Yeah, Tarragon. Well, I think B Bill was only concerned with doing good work. As I said before, he was not concerned with only writing, only uh, producing hit plays. He was really concerned with the development of writers, not just me, right. other, other writers as well. But he obviously had a, an ability to choose writers who could write. Yeah, he he did. didn't wait to see what the audience figures were. His instincts before were good. However, you know, as I, as I said, he told me that it was Jane who told him to go after me. He wasn't going to do it, he told me. That was very interesting confession. I told Jane that, and she says, he, he told you that? I said, yes, he did. She was surprised. Because mano o mano, he thought, well, this guy is just giving me the finger. I'm, a absolutely. I'm not going to. Yeah. But he listened to her. Right. And that, that was Bill, too. He didn't have any. Bill, Bill seemed to lack an, an, an ego, you know. He, he wasn't. He, he didn't have that kind of ego that other people have. I mean, a lot of these, these artistic directors will not hire somebody who's more talented than they are. Bill would, Bill would every time, if he, if he could. He didn't care if they, they showed him up. Yep. He, he was just concerned about doing good work. Because certainly there was criticism of Bill's directing, yep. you know, as the... Yep. As the, as the skill of directors became very auteurish, uh, Bill was often criticized and often given hard times in rehearsals by various casts. Yes. Um, and various playwrights, including myself. Bill and I didn't always get along in, in rehearsals, but we, I, I could tell him, we, we talked in shorthand, Bob, basically. I, I'd, I'd watch something and I'd say, I'd go up to Bill and I'd say, Bill, that was, that was shit. I'd whisper it to him, that was shit. he said, oh, I know exactly what you mean. He knew exactly, I didn't have to say anything else, just that it was shit. And he'd go away and correct it. That's shorthand, yeah, shit? that was shorthand. <laughs> <laughs> that was shorthand, and he knew exactly what I meant. He didn't have to say, what do you mean? Well, the way an actor is playing a moment, or a way a scene was staged, or? Both. he said, say, I'll, I'll fix it after lunch, or after the break. Right. Because probably, he, whatever was bugging me about the scene was also bugging him. And as soon as I said that it was shit, he understood exactly what it was because he was thinking about it himself. And that's the kind of relationship we had. We talked in shorthand. So he did basically always trust your instinct? Or did you have some instincts he, that no, were loggerheads? He, he, he always trusted me. He said, that it's your play. He said, I'm... I'm I'm, I'm going to do it whether it, 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 he, he would do the play whether he thought it was working or not. He didn't think jitters was working. He came up to me one time when we were doing jitters and said, how the hell did you know that was going to work? I said, I, it made me laugh, Bill. Right. He says, because I didn't think it was going to. But that wouldn't stop him from doing it. Because I wrote the play and he wanted to do it as further my, my development. Right. Are the directors now that you feel strongly about, positively? Yeah, I do. I have Ted Dykstra. Right. He's the only one I'm working with now. Right. Because Ted's done Saltwater Moon. He's doing Done All the Fields. Oh, he's done All the Fields. And he's going he's gonna to be doing Jitters. Jitters, right. Right. And have you ever seen actors... I don't ask this question because I am an actor, but have you ever seen actors take a part in one of your plays to a place further or more interesting than you thought that part could go? No. No. I usually find the opposite. They don't take it far enough. Oh, really? Yeah. Because they don't have the imagination for it or the courage for it or the... Let's take the example of Jacob right. Mercer. Mm -hmm. um, if an actor is afraid or wary of taking uh, a character to an extreme of emotional violence, an actor sometimes won't go there because they'll feel they don't look good. Let me give you, give me, I'll give you an example of this. There was a production of uh, Leaving Home in Ottawa years and years ago. 
I want to see it. And at the uh, end of the play, the actor playing Jacob walks over, doesn't take his belt off and beat Ben. He, he, takes his, uh, he, he walks over to Ben, grabs him by the scruff of the neck, drags him to the door, opens the door and shoves him out. That's not my play. Right. And um, I went back afterwards and I said, why the hell did the director do that? And I was told by the producer that he, he couldn't handle the violence in the play. I said, well, Bill Glasgow couldn't handle the violence either. I mean, he's a very gentle man, but he, he serves the play. You're supposed to serve the play. That happens too. That same night, during the climatic scene, Jacob walked off stage. He dried. He walked off stage, got his cue, and came, uh, came back on. The next day, the review came out saying how Mr. French let down the actors in that scene by having Jacob walk off stage. So, you know, <laughs> we get credit for things, but we also get blamed for things. Yeah. And in terms of directors taking your play and adding elements, are like you... It. You don't like that? No, I don't. So let's talk specifically about uh, Saltwater Moon okay. that I directed down at Parsborough. So yeah. I, I added a, the ghost of Bob Foote. Yeah. You That's writing another character into the play that shouldn't be there. Right. So that just is automatically off, offside. Yeah. If it wasn't you, Bob, I would have said something. But why didn't you say something? Because you're, 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 you're Bob. Oh, well, thank you're you. Bob. But, um, but you don't put control on your plays, like the Beckett estate, saying they will be done this way and no other way? Well, I, I, after a few experiences like that, I now have in my contract where they're not allowed to change the sexual gender. Right. Um, what else? Well, uh, basically, they're not, uh, actors are not allowed to uh, change lives without written permission from the author. Right. Totally reasonably. Yeah, it's reasonable. But in, in this case, Salt Water Moon and putting the ghost of Bob Foote, who I think played the violin, was silent. He did. With no words. He played the violin. He played the violin. He did play it well, too. He was a, he was a <laughs> Serbian refugee. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was a very interesting story because he had it that. But there's no possibility that you can, and I'm not, I'm not trying to get you to, um, to okay my choice, but is there never an addition by a director to the play that you've set that you think actually enhances the play? Well, you see, if, if, if somebody had come to me and said, uh, I'm, uh, can I do this? I would have thought about it and I either said yes or no, but I wasn't given a choice. Right. No, no, nobody told me that was gonna happen. I was so surprised when it, when it did. But I've seen other characters stuck in my play that I didn't, I, I went to a play uh, one night, one of my plays, and I thought I had come to an O'Casey play. There were guys in overcoats and trench coats and sneaking around the houses and, you know. I, I, I actually got up my, and thought, I've come to the wrong theater. Right. And do you say something afterwards or? Oh, I did, I did. I threatened to sue them. And, and they weren't going to change it the next night. And I said, I'm, I'm, my, uh, my agent contacted them and said, uh, you're, you're facing a lawsuit if you don't. And they changed it. On what grounds? In your, but so in, in your contract with the theater, you say certain changes can't be made, right? Transgender or No, they, can't, they can't change that. They can't put characters in that I never wrote. Right. If and they speak. Whether they speak or not. So here's another. I did a production of, uh, of, of The Fields Late in Calgary, and I added, uh, wordlessly, I added because I wanted to see the coffin and I wanted to see the, the male mourners and mm -hmm. I wanted to see that maleness. So I added at the top of the show the coffin and these, the backs of the men sitting in the kitchen and then yeah. getting up and taking the coffin off. The only trouble with that, Bob, is that because um, I saw that production down east. Oh, right, right. And I, and I was very confused by it. I'll tell you why. I couldn't figure out who was in the coffin, whether it was Jacob, who dies at the end of Up the Fields Lately, Right. Or, dot. 
who, and it's but she, it's Ben. Ben Ben's relationship to that coffin I know, tells but, you who's inside. But you don't know that when the play starts. Well, I suppose it could have been Dot. Yeah. Because I, I I heard somebody say who who died. But in this case, it's a director saying, I adore the play, and I want a, a color at the beginning. I want a, a tone. And I know David's written it that way, but I want a tone in there as well to understand the maleness and the maleness of this. And partly was that my father had died, and there had been the men carrying his, right. his coffin right. and his corpse. And right. so that was also playing on me. So here's a director, which you don't have to like, adding a color to a, a, a to the beginning of the play to propel it slightly differently. Now, I have no problem with adding a color as long as it's not confusing. Right. And that, that, that confused me. Right. And I wrote the play and I couldn't figure out who was, who was in the coffin. That was my problem. Right. Have you ever sued a theater? Oh, of course not. Who's got the money to sue a theater? <laughs> 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 What well, theater's got the money to pay a lawsuit?